Hello students, Logan Phillips here and I am your professor. Today's video is going to be about the Microsoft Word document processor. Uh, this is an introduction to Microsoft Word as well as a sort of lab component that's a hands-on on how to use Microsoft Word appropriately. Now with everything I always believe that you need to know a little bit about the history of it to really understand where it came from so that you can best use it in today's modern time and sort of see where it's going. Now, Microsoft Word was originally developed by a guy named Charles uh, Simone and Richard Brody. They both worked for the Microsoft, or the Microsoft Xerox Corporation way back in the 1980s, I think 1980, 1981. Now, they are the ones that originally created the source code. Now, Microsoft Word came out as a document processor or a word processor. And before we had computer systems and we used this wonderful technology that makes our lives so much easier, uh, people used typewriters. And so you had to physically type, put in a piece of paper, hit a button. A lot of my younger students may not have ever even seen a typewriter before outside of maybe uh, movies, TV shows, or even a museum. Uh, they're not widely used. So the document processor software was a direct reflection of a piece of technology that was already used in our offices. Those word processing tools of typewriters. Now, Microsoft Word is developed off of the Xerox Bravo software, which was the very first what you see is what you get document processing software. So when you typed, you actually saw it appear on the screen. Now, these were all released off of the MS-DOS operating system, so they're pretty old. We're talking 1980s, 1982, 83. Now, it took about four or five years of Xerox building this program before Microsoft took it over, hired them on, and brought the company together and had it produced for Microsoft. And the very first version of Microsoft Word got developed and released to the public in about 1990. Now, in 1990, the program cost a whopping $498 just for the Word processing software itself which is about 400 times more expensive than we pay for the whole package now. And of course we can get document processors like Google Docs uh, for completely free that's much more powerful than that original 1990 was. Now in today's dollars, that $498 in, that $498 in 1990 reflects up to actually about, if you were to spend that same amount of money with inflation, would be about $934. So imagine going and spending $1,000 on a single piece of software that the only thing it did was allow you to type on your keyboard and see it on the screen and then print to a printer. None of us would even think to ever do that, but it was revolutionary for the market. Uh, businesses could do so much more than just having to have people physically loading paper. You could send documents, you can store documents in much bigger quantity without having such a big paper source. Now we've come a very long way since our early versions of Microsoft Word. You can see here in this picture of Word 1990 or Word Office 1.0, it was just as rudimentary as you could possibly get. It had three, four types of fonts. You could center or align your text a little bit and pretty much it was just a blank page where you typed in information. Now in 2000, Microsoft became extremely popular and we had the release of like Windows XP and Office 2000. And you can see here, it got a tremendously uh, much ro more robust environment where you can start doing printing, uh, sharing information, highlighting, underlining, changing font colors. Uh, it got to be where sort of what we look like today. Now since that 2000 version, we have still made leaps and bounds ahead of time and we're now at the Microsoft Office 2016 version, which let's go ahead and open it up. Now for the first time, if you never open up Microsoft Office, you will click on your start menu, which is the bottom left corner if you're using Windows 10 or Windows 7. And you'll just, you can do it a couple different ways. One, if you already have it pinned, you can click on the word 2016. If you don't know where it's at, you can actually type in the word word and it will bring it up or if you don't want to do that you can click on all applications come down to Microsoft Office let's see Office 2016 and find or that's the tools I'm sorry find the Microsoft Word let's see Word 2016 there we go any of these ways will open it up and give you access to that Microsoft Excel or Microsoft Word 2016 I apologize now, once you open it up, the very first thing you're going to see is what's called the backstage view. All right, the backstage view is pretty much your landing space for all of your Microsoft suites across the board. If you're using Excel, Word, PowerPoint, backstage view is where you're going to spend a whole lot of time. 
Now here we have a backstage view, and the very first thing I see on the left hand side is all my previously open documents. These might be an open today, might be an open older. You can also open other documents from other places. And then in the center here we have all of these templates, which a template is just a pre-manufactured document from Microsoft. They say that our artists, our specialists, uh, like the way these look, their colors match, the font matches everything. They are extremely well designed. And now that Microsoft Word has been in function since 1990, that puts it at what? 26 years old, I think, so far, uh, for just this particular application. It has been used in business for 26 years. Every type of document that you could possibly ever want to create has already been created. So a lot of the times you don't even have to recreate things. You can start off with a document that's already been developed, already well respected, and go from there. So maybe I want to do something like create a resume. So if I'm wanting to create from a blank document, I can always choose start from scratch, which is blank document, or I can go through and actually search for templates that I particularly want to find. And so I'm going to look for resumes here, and I have a variety of different ones that we have. And there's categories of resumes on the right hand side. We have resumes, cover letters, we have design sets, we have personal resumes, uh, we have anything you can imagine. Now I'm gonna choose just a random one so that we can get in here. And yeah, let's go ahead and just choose a uh, polished cover letter. Seems good. Uh, this is a template, it's pre-made by main, our Microsoft. And so if I wanted to use it, all you gotta do is click on the create button and it's gonna bring me back into the Microsoft Word environment. Now. All Microsoft products are designed in the same way. We have toolbars that run across the top. And across the top, this is whole area is called the ribbon. Now each in the ribbon, we have different pieces called tabs. The home tab is where you spend a bulk majority of your time. We have an insert tab when you're pulling information in from outside of Microsoft Word into the document. We have design tab, which is for making things look pretty. We have layout tab, which is designed for how to make things look on the page themselves. We have references, which I'm gonna get to this in a little bit, uh, where you can actually mark up and edit a document without having to make everything permanent. After that, we have mailings. We can actually do bulk mailings for Microsoft. You can create a bulk mailing address, send out newsletters, manage creating address letters, our address labels. We can do a variety of our office tasks, all from Microsoft Word. Uh, review is for document markup. You can check your spelling and grammar. You can check a variety of pieces from here. Uh, view will allow you to view it in a few different ways. Say if you're writing a book, you can actually look at it in read mode. Uh, you can look at it in just regular document mode, print mode. If you're making a web page, which you can do in Microsoft Word, uh, you can actually use web page mode. <clears throat> now the developer tab you're not going to see on your particular version of 2016. Because I teach advanced courses, I have some tabs on here that are more advanced and that I've actively turned on. So if you get developers tab, you can actually start doing things like recording macros, uh, doing a little bit of programming, a little bit of visual basic. You can start making the Microsoft environments work specifically for you if you get to that level. Which if you're interested in that, I do teach a Microsoft Word standalone class that will take you from the very basics all the way up to utilizing this developers tab and getting in a bit of macros and recording those pre-manufactured steps. Now in addition to the basic tabs, excuse me, in addition to the basic tabs, we have specialty tabs that will appear depending what you click on. So if I'm here clicking on uh, pieces of text, uh, I can get specialty tabs and you can see this is organized as a table. So I have the table tool tabs that have popped up. And in table tool tabs, I have things like design and layout. Now design is always going to be, I want to make something look pretty. Where layout is, I'm messing with the physical content. So depending on what you click on, whether it be a picture, a table, you can see I have some drawing tools here, different types of tabs will appear. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you a few different of these tools and how to use them by doing the um, introductory uh, Microsoft Word document. So give me one second. Now every single version of Microsoft product has the things that they highlight as the absolute best. So I'm going to go through the tool menus up top on the ribbon, and which again the ribbon is this entire piece up here, and I'm going to go through these tabs and show you some of the more specific tools. Then we're going to work through and I'm going to show you the things that Microsoft thinks is the most important of the possible tools. 
And on your home tab is some very special pieces. Uh, the very first thing you're going to find is the font grouping. Every single so every ribbon on the ribbons has different groups inside of it. So on the home tab, we have a font group inside the home tab on the ribbon. So again, smallest piece is the group. Next is the tab. After the tab, all the tabs together make up a ribbon. All right, so we have this home tab. We're on the font group. This is where you're going to choose what style font you want by using the drop down radio box. You're going to choose what size font you want, which font is just the way that a particular letter work, looks. So like, let's select this W. I can choose a variety of different fonts. So I can make it Algerian. I can make it uh, size instead of 42, size 72. So it's just a matter of modifying exactly how big, how small, and the style of writing that that font is made out of. We also have things like underline, bold, and italicize. Bold makes it thick and black, italicize makes it tilted to the side, and underline puts a line underneath it. Uh, now next to that we have a strike through, which puts a line through the middle of it, and we have things like subscript and superscript, which are typically used when dealing with things like mathematics. Like if we want to change this welcome to a superscript, we just hit the X squared, and now we have a big W with a line, and the word of the letters, or the rest of the letters are next to it, but higher up. And in addition to that, we have some drawing abilities. We can change the font color uh, if we don't like it. We can highlight the word, or we can make it into a special type of word art, uh, where we can actually design it to be a little bit more special or unique. And let's just get rid of that. There we go. All right, so this is all how you change your font styling for any particular words. Now, sometimes you want to copy and paste. Now, there are certain key commands on your keyboard that you're really going to want to learn. The first one is Control C. So I'm going to hit, and I'm going to highlight the word word, and I'm going to hit the Control C button. What that has done is I have now copied that word. If I go to put my cursor anywhere else, I can hit Control V, and it will paste that particular word exactly where the cursor is standing. Now there's also other choices we have here. If we hit the radio button below paste, we can actually paste a special. So if you're wanting to paste it but you don't want to use all the formatting, like I don't want to have it being all this, I want it to be very basic, I can choose to paste it in certain styles, like unformatted text. Hit OK. Sorry my computer is running a little slow, I got a lot of things open. So you can also paste and copy only the formatting, only how things look. So maybe this welcome, I really like what I've done here. I'm going to copy it and then paste just the formatting here. So let's do format painter and then we're going to paste that format to everywhere else. So you can see that you can paste words, you can paste the text itself without formatting, or you can paste just the formatting without the text. Now, cut means to move it from this location to a new location. Copy means to duplicate it between two locations. So you can do a cut and paste, which means, well, I'll take it from here and move it over here, or you can do a copy and paste, which means I will copy it from here, leave it there, and then paste a duplicate of it somewhere else. Now, the other key command I'm going to encourage you to learn is the Control and Z button. If you hit Control and Z, it is like hitting an undo. So you can two step backwards and get rid of mistakes that you've done. And you can keep typing that until you're all the way back at the very beginning. One more time. So Control Z is undo. Control C is copy. Control V is paste. Now, <clears throat> now, in addition to doing the, just the fonts, we can also modify how the fonts are actually laid out. And so we have this paragraph grouping in the right hand side. We can do things like make bullet points uh, of shapes. We can change bulletin points to numbers. Uh, we can do our indents to the left and the right. Um, skipped over here. And we can align the text. We have a left align a center align, a right align, and a square or justified align. So all that does is tell the document where to place the word. So right now we're on left align. If I do center align, 
right align or square align. All it does is change where the text is between the margins of the document. Now with all of our groupings inside of a ribbon, we have a special button in the bottom right hand corner, or at least for most of them. This is called the dialog box launcher. So if we're looking at the font grouping on the home tab on the ribbon, in the bottom right hand corner, we have a font dialog box launcher. If I click on it, it's gonna bring up an advanced menu. Now this advanced, now this advanced menu has all kinds of more in depth choices. So I can do very specific things as well as see a preview. I can even do text effects from here and I can go into advanced, do the scaling. I can do a position more specifically. If I want to do a position to a specific measurement, I can do it from here. I can do ligatures, number spacings, and of course it always does a preview at the very bottom. So underneath all of the groupings, always be aware that there is a dialog box launcher. So if you go into the paragraph grouping, we can actually go to the paragraph grouping dialog box launcher, and we're gonna open up with a new uh, set of menus here. Now, the two dialog box launchers that you're gonna be using the most common are gonna be your font grouping and your paragraph grouping. Uh, the paragraph grouping really does with the words as a whole, like as a whole paragraph or a whole line, and modifies where your spacing is. So if you're wanting to set double spacing or 1.5 spacing or multiple spacings, you can do that all from the dialog box launcher for the paragraph grouping. You can also do line and page breaks, uh, splitting the page into multiple pages and those type of items. Now for a lot of us, when we're typing, we make errors. Luckily we're in the computer age and errors are easy to fix. So I'm gonna modify and what's gonna happen when I've changed documents, I've typed a simple phrase, and so what I'm getting here is spelling errors. So we got Professor P is misspelled awesome, and I misspelled love and courses. Whenever you get a misspelled word, you're going to get a red squiggly line underneath that word. Now there's a couple ways you can fix this. The easiest way is right click. If you right click on the word, Microsoft Word is going to give you a pop-up menu of the correct spellings, that are what it thinks the correct spellings is supposed to be. So with that, I can just click the word and go from there or I can go up to the review tab and underneath the review tab on the far left side in the proofing group I can actually click on the spelling and grammar and it's going to give me a new po or box on the right hand side called the spelling box and it's going to tell me what it thinks the word is supposed to be and should I change it or what so I know this is supposed to be love so I'm going to change and now I have a spelling and grammar that is completed so Professor P is awesome and I love uh, this courses Now, in addition to just doing spelling and grammar, sometimes you're wanting to find a new word, one that uh, just is not on the tip of your tongue. A way to do that is actually to click on the word, highlight it, and we can actually go into that review tab on the left-hand side in the proofing group. We can choose the thesaurus. And with the thesaurus, it will tell us synonyms and antonyms of a particular word. So maybe the course isn't what I want. Uh, maybe I want to do something uh, more specific. Uh, I love this. Let's just say path. Now I've chosen path and I can actually replace this word now. By clicking on the drop down menu and clicking on insert. And so I can actually expand a lot of my wording very easily and quickly uh, to much more you know, robust language. I'm needing a thesaurus right now because I'm forgetting my words. Now, we've done spelling, we've done grammar. I've told you how to do a synonym and antonyms uh, using the, the, the thesaurus, but a lot of times you're gonna be using in college is writing essay papers, and we all, all love to write essay papers. So I'm gonna show you a way that you can actually help yourself throughout the rest of your college career by using Microsoft Word to write your essay papers. Now, the first thing I'm gonna show you is on the review tab in the proofing group, a lot of your professors are gonna say that it has to have X number of words. If you come up here, you can actually do a word count by clicking on this button in the proofing group. And it will tell you exactly how many words are inside your uh, document. It includes how many pages, words, characters, uh, lines, everything of that nature. If you don't wanna go through that button, on the bottom left-hand corner, we actually have a little counter that shows you how many words are still there. 
Uh, so you can get more information by going to the review and the word count, or you can get basic information by the left-hand side in the uh, dialog box down, down in the left-hand corner. All right, one of the big things everyone, no one seems to know about is on the references page. Now, every one of your documents that you're going to create for college, uh, for above you on it, is going to need sources. You're going to have to do research, find the places, connect it with the information, put them all into either MLA or APA or APA5 or MLA3, whatever format that your professor is telling you to put them in. And these sources, a lot of people go through online, they look up the source formatting and they try to duplicate it by handwriting it. I'm going to tell you that that's a giant waste of time. I'm going to tell you why. It's because there is a source manager inside Microsoft Word on the References tab. Now, this can help you because once you put a source in, it will save that source forever. So when you go and get your final essays or your final uh, theory papers that you're going to be turning in at the end of your college career, you can actually source yourself throughout your entire college career if you use the source menu. So I'm going to come up here to the References tab, and I'm going to do Citations and Bibliography Grouping, and I'm going to choose to Manage Sources. Now, I'd always show this to students because you guys are going to be in Comp 1, Comp 2, and you're going to be working with sources. Uh, so what we're going to do here is I'm going to insert a source for this essay I'm writing about how awesome Professor P is. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to create a new source. And I'm going to say I, I got my source from an interview. So I'm going to choose my source type. And I'm going to say it's an interview. And there we go. And the interviewing me person, uh, well, if I'm going to find out how awesome Professor P is, I'm going to ask Logan Phillips. And the title of this interview is uh, something simple. Who he is, the interviewer, uh, Joe Bob, Marie Bob. And we did this interview in 2015. Yeah, let's just do a month as well. Uh, December and the 24th. So once I've created this interview or this uh, citation, all I got to do is hit OK. And now it's inside my Microsoft Word environment. And more importantly, I can insert it. No, I hit the wrong thing. Give me one second. I can insert it as a bibliography. So I have my, rev <laughs> my sources here. I'm going to close that. And I'm going to come into my references on the tab. And I do apologize. My Word document is running very, very slow. And I'm going to come down here. And I need to insert a bibliography for my professor. So I'm going to choose what format style I want. That professor uh, wants the MLA 7th edition. So I'm going to choose MLA because that's what undergraduates do. And I'm going to choose to insert a bibliography. And just choose one I like. And notice that now that my reference that I put in there, my citation, is perfectly organized into MLA formatting. And I didn't have to do any research on how that does. This reference tab will be the greatest thing that you have ever used inside any of your comp or writing courses and will be magical when you get to your master's and the, uh, doctorate degrees when you're trying to create real research papers with hundreds to thousands of citations that you're going to be doing. Because not only can it do your bibliography, here in this pr uh, particular sentence I wrote, Professor P is breathtaking and I love this path, I can actually cite my bibliography reference by putting in a citation and it will correctly format the citation for my in-text citations as well. All right, with that, the last things I'm going to show you is how to save a document, how to change a document's name, and a few of the pieces of the online and the cloud computing piece of this. So the very first thing I want you to see in the top middle of the screen, I have this word document three. This is my current document name. Now I want to save it because all my documents I turn in are always going to be my last name, first name. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to go back to my backstage view by clicking on file. And then I'm going to choose to save as. Save will save it as the current document name. Save as allows me to change the document name. So I'm going to choose save as. I'm going to choose my location. And this is important because if you've signed on, you can actually save it to your cloud drive, which is called the OneDrive. <clears throat> or you can save it to the computer that you're currently working on. So I'm going to choose this particular computer. I'm going to choose my desktop. And I'm going to name it uh, Professor P Word Chapter 1. I'm going to hit Save. 
Now notice at the top middle that my document has now changed its name. If it's not changing its name, then you may have an issue because you haven't saved it correctly. So go back to your backstage view, try again. Now you can also print everything from this backstage view using the print button. Or you can export it if you're doing tables to an Excel spreadsheet. <clears throat> and you can also change information about the document, like say who the author is. Now, a lot of us are going to get into the uh, career paths. We're working in businesses. You're going to be creating documents. You're going to be emailing back and forth. And one of the things that you're going to find that you need to do is to keep authorship of the things that you've created. So one of the ways to do that is to protect and create the properties. You can modify any property of the document by just clicking on it and changing it. So I can say the author of this document is somebody else. I can limit this document to where it can't change anything. Um, I can make it to where it's a password protected document, all from this backstage view. So that is the Microsoft Word environment, a very basic introductory. Uh, this is a two-part lecture, so the second part is going to be the hands-on. And we're going to work through a document uh, that is uploaded to your Blackboard website. Uh, you can find the document in the lectures tab underneath uh, this particular video. There will be a link with the start file and instruction file. If you need help, let me know, logan.phillips at 1 at tulsacc.edu, and 595-7451 is my office phone number, and of course I'm in room 2110. All right, we're going to take a short intermission so I can get a drink, uh, get a little cotton mouth here, and then we will be back at it with the second half of this video. All right, guys, this is the second part of the video. Sorry about the short break. Uh, it looked like an interruption in the video. I had to go get me some lunch. All right, so what we're going to be doing now for the second half is we're actually going to work through a project. So every chapter of our applications is going to have a video lecture that goes along with it, as well as a video project that goes along with it. This is how you earn the two points. Um, I should say this is part of how you earn the two points. Don't forget about our secret words. All right, so online, you should be finding a start file that has a few different pieces in it. And you're going to be looking for the documents that say Word Chapter 1 Instruction and Word Chapter 1 Start File. When you open them up, you're going to see this instruction file looks something like this. Uh, we're going to be creating a verbatim farm stand completing a flyer. So this is the steps that we're going to be walking through in this video. And we're going to be creating something that looks like this. So this will introduce you to all the tools, actually a little bit of hands-on, and it'll give you a chance to actually play with it with a helpful video from your wonderful professor. All right, so open up the instruction file, and after you're done with the instruction file, open up your start file. Now the start file is gonna say Word, chapter one, start file. Now, the very first thing you're gonna wanna do is enable editing. This will allow you to modify and change the document uh, as we go through this project. And the second step we're going to do is we're going to just save the document as a new name. Now remember that the original name of the document always shows up in the top in the middle. So we're going to go File, we're going to choose Save As, and then we're going to choose, I'm going to choose my desktop uh, because it's an easy place to access. Uh, you can choose wherever you want, but make sure you remember where you saved it. And I'm going to name it Word, One, Last Name, first name and hit save. Now notice that this is a docx file. That is a 2010, 2011, 2013, and 2016 file format. If it's just a DOC, it is a 2007 or prior document. So we're going to save it as the newest version as a docx and hit save. So we're working with our file. We're going to open up the instruction menu. Now you're not going to be seeing the instruction file on my screen but you should have it open on your computer and following along. And we're going to work, work through all of these given project steps. So I'm going to move that over and then let's open this up. All right, so for our first step, we are going to be working with the ribbon. We're going to be working with modifying the text. We're going to work on modifying the layouts and we're going to be going into some submenus. So remember that the ribbon is everything across the top. Inside the ribbon are several groups or uh, several tabs. We home tab, insert tab, design tab, and so on. Inside each tab is a different group. So like here is the font group. And inside most of the groups is a dialog box, box launcher, which is in the bottom right hand corner. And that will open up a new dialog box that gives you a bit more advanced commands. So let's go ahead and close that back out. So 
you have a basic layout of Microsoft Word. So to begin, we're going to start with modifying the margins. Now what the margins are are the white spaces on the top and the sides of every given document where the text doesn't flow into. So we're going to modify the margins and we're going to put them at a 0.5 margin. So if you go into the Layout tab, in the far left side we have the Page Setout Grouping and we have margins here. And we're going to change these margins to a 0.5 on the top and bar bottom. So let's go to custom margins, the very bottom. And I'm gonna tell you this, that I grew up with a very bad speech impediment. So sometimes I trip over my words or I might, might slur or uh, mumble my words. I apologize, uh, I do try to make sure I watch out for that. But if you hear me slurring, uh, know that I am trying to catch up. It's just a long time ago, I had a bad speech impediment. All right, so on our margins, we have this margin dialog box opening. We have a top margin, we're going to change it to 0.5. We have a bottom margin, and we're going to change that one to 0.5 as well. All right, once we hit OK, this is going to apply it to the whole document. And now we have a margin at the top that is a white space. You can see here on the rulers uh, that will be 0.5. And we have a margin at the bottom that is also going to be 0.5. If you're not seeing the uh, rulers on the top and left-hand side, you can go into your View tab and choose on the left hand side in the show group the show ruler. All right, I'm going to go back to the home tab. <clears throat> right, after we change the margins, next thing we're going to do is we're going to apply the fill green accent one shadow text effect to the heading veranda farm stand. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have to highlight the verbena farm stand. I'm going to trip over that word over and over again. So let's highlight it with using our left click and drag. Uh, you can put your cursor anywhere and then highlight wherever you need. You can also use your keyboards by placing your cursor, hitting your shift button and the right arrow. And what we're going to do next is we're going to put in a fill green accent one shadow and that is going to be a text effect. Alright, so here on the home tab in the font grouping we have this A that is outlined in blue and is white. That's called the Text Effects and Topography button. And next to it is a little upside down triangle. That upside down triangle is called a radio button. If you click on the radio button, it's going to give you more options. And what we're going to look for is the Fill Green Accent 1 Shadow. So if we come down here, we're going to find Shadow. We're going to find Fill Green Accent 1. Oh, I'm sorry. Come up to the top here. Fill, aqua, fill. There we go. So we got fill, green, accent, one, shadow. It's the second column in first row. Notice that it changed the text a little bit. It's now green. It has a background shadow to it. <clears throat> After that, we're going to format the paragraph beginning with Verbana Farm Grows a Herb. So we're going to highlight the whole paragraph. All right, so we're going to modify this a little bit by clicking on the paragraph grouping, which is in the home tab. And we're going to come down to the dialog box launcher in the bottom right corner. Now the first thing we want to do is remove the spacing after the paragraph. That's a blank space in between that paragraph and that picture. So in the indents and spacing tab, if we come down, we see spacing before and spacing after. And here we have an eight point spacing after. So let's just change that to a zero. And the next we're going to change the spacing for the whole paragraph in between each of the lines of text to a line spacing of 1.15. So let's go ahead and put in a 1.15. In just case, uh, seems like my video glitched a little bit there. Uh, we're going to do that again. We're going to open up the paragraph dialog box, which is in the paragraph grouping on the home tab. We're going to change the after spacing to zero and the line spacing to exactly 1.15 points and hit OK. Next, in step four, in the same paragraph, we are we're going to delete all year through stock varies according to the season. So let's highlight the sentence we are open all year. So we're going to go through here. I'm going to click my cursor before the W and I'm just going to drag my mouse. Easiest way to delete is just hit the backspace once it's highlighted and it's gone. 
Next on step five, we're gonna apply the soft edge rectangle picture style to the photo of the herbs and integrate it into the flyer. So when I click on a special item inside Microsoft Word, it's gonna bring me up some new specialty tabs. So I'm gonna click on this picture and notice that I now have a format picture toolbar or tab. And so we're gonna look for the uh, soft edge rectangle picture style. So I have the picture styles grouping and I'm gonna choose a soft edge rectangle. Matte white, metal frame. Okay, the next step we're gonna do is we are gonna use uh, step eight, move the insertion point to the end of the four special orders uh, contract paragraph. So it looks down here, four special orders, and I'm gonna put my cursor at the very end of it. And we're gonna type the information of info at binafarms.cengage.com and hit spacebar. Now what that's done is it's created a live hyperlink. So if I was to use my control button and click my left mouse key, it will action, actually open up the website um, or, and allow me to email these guys over since it's an email address. Notice that it automatically open up my Outlook account and is going to send an email to them. So if I was sending this document live uh, through email, they can actually engage me directly from my Word document. Next, we're going to change the height of the herb bouquet in picture to one inch. So I'm going to click on this picture and I'm going to come up to the right hand side and I can see the picture tools format tab that we have on the right hand side of that is a size grouping. Now I'm going to change this to a height of one inch. So I'm just going to type in one and hit enter. Now I want, this <clears throat> I want you to notice when I hit one and hit enter that my width is going to automatically adjust. These two are connected so that one will adjust and keep the aspect ratio of the two pieces. Next, we're gonna bold the paragraph Verbena Farm Stand. So let's highlight Verbena Farm Stand. And we're gonna come up here to the Home tab into the font grouping and hit bold. And then we're gonna remove the hyperlink from the address 205 Mapleton Road. So to do that, all I gotta do is right click on the 205 Mapleton and I can see that a new specialty menu has popped up and I have this item of remove hyperlink. A hyperlink just takes me to another application uh, like email or a web or something of that nature. So I don't want this to be live, I want it just to be straight text. So we're gonna remove the hyperlink. Then after that, we're gonna italicize the text vervenafarmsengage.com. So let's go ahead and hi highlight that, come up to our home tab in the font grouping and hit italicize. <clears throat> now all italicize does is take a straight letter and tilt it to the side. That uh, just makes it a little bit nicer looking. Excuse me. And on step 13, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna apply a lime accent to lighter 80%, starting with the photo of the uh, herb bouquet and going down to so the Vena Farms and all these other pieces. So I'm gonna put my cursor right before the V and I'm gonna highlight this entire paragraph. Next, I'm gonna go on to my design tab and I have this colors in my document formatting piece. I apologize, I told you incorrect. Go back to your home tab, go to your paragraph grouping, choose the shading bucket, do your radio button, and we're gonna choose the six column second row. One, two, three, four, five, six column second row. So all that's done is make a nice little green square around all my information. So now you should have a document that has modified pictures. You have a document with some nice engaging content. You have a hyperlink where they can actively engage you. The last thing I wanna do is make sure I save my document. I can either use the save button in the top left or I could have gone to file and save. When you're done with that, just upload it to the Blackboard website and you've earned your two points as long as you do this with the three C.